Welcome back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Sunday Wire. I'm your host, Patrick Henningsen. We're streaming out live on the Alternate Current Radio Network and also at 21stCenturyWire.com. And if you missed any of the live broadcasts, this will be available afterwards in podcasting format on a number of platforms, most notably iTunes, but also iHeartRadio and Spotify and a few others as well. But uh, thank you for rejoining us on the line now. We're going live to South America, specifically to Santiago, Chile. And I'm joined by our intrepid correspondent there. His name is Andre Vilcek. Uh, he was on the show a couple of weeks ago. He's on the line right now on the live link. Hello, Andre. Hello, Patrick. Nice to be on your show again. Yeah, thanks for joining us, Andre. And uh, t- tell us about what's going on. I've seen the scenes What's happening in, in Chile, in Santiago, but across the country, it's absolutely incredible. I have not seen numbers like this on the street. I just saw they pulled down a statue uh, from the central square uh, just yesterday. It's just incredible scenes that we're seeing here. What's what's happening? You, you just arrived uh, recently, but uh, just give us a, a quick kind of feel for what's going on there. Well, the statues are going actually down all over Chile. They uh, managed to pull down the statue of Pedro de Valdivia, the conqueror um, in the southern city of Valdivia. That was uh, about one week ago. And now in uh, Plaza de Italia, which used to be called Bacchedano, according to the Bacchedano, General Bacchedano, who was uh, actually involved in the uh, War of Pacific, where Chile joined the United Kingdom against uh, Peru and Bolivia. And the gentleman was actually a general and short-term president of Chile. So that person, uh, his statue was uh, standing in the middle of the of the city on Plaza Italia. It was a symbol, a, histor- a symbolic center of Santiago. And now people are uh, actually stepping all over it and uh, uh, destroying the remnants of uh, this shameful uh, past uh, of Chile. So this is a new Chile. This is a totally different uh, country. It's a new beginning. Uh, uh, they are going back. I met some uh, activists, I met some politicians. Uh, many people want Chile to go back to uh, before 9 11, 1973, when the United States, uh, Henry Kissinger, and uh, Chase Manhattan, and others, ITT, uh, managed to destroy Chilean socialism under President uh, Allende and uh, to impose the military fascist regime of General Pinochet. So many people want now Chile to be to return where it was before this horrible event of 1973. And one, one thing we're seeing, Andre, around in some of these other places in the world is that when a movement gets traction, when things start to bubble and things are happening, then at this point, Western interests, and this is where the United States has always been so skilled, uh, that it has its pieces in place that it can hijack or co-opt a movement like in Lebanon or in Hong Kong or in any, any of these places. So it gets started via various means, but then it can be co-opted and hijacked at a certain point. What is the level of political awareness right now in Chile about this risk? In Chile, the level of awareness is very high. What we saw in Hong Kong, actually, it was uh, produced by the West already in uh, 2015. That was long before uh, this, like I call them black ninjas, uh, began uh, uh, its destructive work. Uh, in Lebanon, uh, we are talking about 2000. Uh, uh, already five uh, during the uh, uh, time when um, uh, the, the opposition was uh, used by the West uh, to get Syrian forces uh, out of Lebanon. And of course, in uh, Lebanon, there is a lot of uh, hijacking uh, uh, going on. So it is in Iraq and uh, uh, in Hong Kong, we know it's not even hijacking. It's just uh, basically orchestrated and produced by the West. But Chile is very different. Chile is actually extremely educated country. It's a cultural uh, and intellectual powerhouse. 
so even when uh, the neoliberal for economic policy was uh, uh, in place during the Pinochet regime and to a uh, well, lesser extent uh, during countless uh, center-left and then center-right uh, and right-wing governments uh, after democracy returned to the country, still uh, Chilean intellectuals, Chilean writers, uh, uh, people from the theater, cinema, and so on, they were very much uh, uh, on top of uh, the game. They understood what's going on. They were warning about situation and so on. Our problem here is the media. Media in Chile is deadly. It's owned like all over, almost everywhere, all over Latin America, it's owned by the business interests, particularly television stations. So uh, one shocking thing is that one thing is what you hear on the street. One thing you hear from protesters and fighters and uh, uh, revolutionaries. And totally different thing is uh, what you see later on on your television screen when it's being called analyzed. Because television is doing tremendously destructive work. What they do is they put together delinquency uh, and uh, revolutionary zeal of the country. And we saw it in Venezuela in the past. We saw it in so many other countries. They basically totally uh, kidnapped the narrative and they are uh, indirectly smearing the revolutionary forces, putting them together in one back with the uh, with people who are looting supermarkets and convenience stores and uh, uh, other uh, shops and uh, uh, markets. So it's uh, incredible when you see when protesters hate uh, media. You know there is this uh, uh, fact which is uh, which leaked even to the Western uh, mass media that uh, television stations of Chile are afraid to go uh, to the streets because uh, their equipment would be damaged and all that. They are covering protests very often from drones because drones cannot be uh, uh, shut down, although protesters are finding out to, uh, ways to do it now too. Uh, and also one of the first uh, places that were destroyed by protesters was uh, Diario, uh, the daily newspaper El Mercurio, in the city, portal city of Valparaiso. This, it's the oldest and the most right-wing newspaper in the country. So that uh, old building from the 19th century was ransacked and burned already a few weeks ago because it was a symbol of, uh, uh, you know, an objective, subjective uh, right-wing elitist uh, coverage of the events in Chile. And, and also, the, so what's the relationship like uh, what have you observed? Um, what are people saying w- between the people and the military? Because this is a very important element. This is well, a very important element. What, from the be- it, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. From the beginning, it was <coughs> absolute shock for the people to see military on the streets. Uh, it was uh, especially for older people because uh, for them, uh, the military on the streets symbolized uh, uh, the coup, 1973, oh, horrible repressions under General Pinochet and something so shocking that they thought that uh, it can never return to their country. Uh, yesterday and the day before yesterday, I was walking with protesters. Uh, I was walking in the center of the city and I was looking even at the police, not to speak about the military. And, you know, you see the faces, they are determined and very angry and uh, very often brutal. I don't want to say that all police officers and all military uh, personnel are there out for blood. But what they are doing now in uh, in Santiago is horrific because not only more than 20 people died, but uh, there are more than 200 people who lost their eyes uh, because pallets are being uh, shot, uh, rubber bullets, uh, uh, all that. So more than 200 people blinded, probably more. Women are being raped. If you walk through the through Santiago, you see graffiti everywhere. Pacos violadores. Paco is a derogatory uh, expression for police. Uh, violadores is rapists. And uh, the same with the well, with the military. Their, their uh, popularity, if we can call it. Uh, Popularity is extremely low, and uh, people are angry. There are trials. There are uh, uh, trials being uh, 
of fire. Uh, I mean, not trials. They are there. Uh, people are denouncing the uh, activity of both military and police. Um, one of the universities uh, was uh, uh, also ransacked by the uh, by them. So the situation is very tense. Graffiti is everywhere, and you know uh, they are basically shooting at people. What I what I filmed here, the day before yesterday and photographed is. No, they just preventively shoot uh, gas. You know, the like when you are in Hong Kong, right, the, the the police uses gas, and not very powerful gas, by the way. Uh, only when uh, things deteriorate, only when uh, there is really uh, damage to property, or, or when the when the rioters are attacking. Here, they are just shooting stuff preventively. You just walk through the street, and nobody does anything violent. People just waving flags, uh, demanding things, but uh, there is gas in the air all over, uh, and the, 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 the gas is being utilized just to kind of pacify people before they even uh, uh, reach Plaza Italia, the center. Yeah, yeah, and also to to kind of um, they what they say it's to disperse the crowds, but if the crowds are peaceful and this is just political demonstrations, you know, why and, and there's no the crowds aren't posing any harm uh, to anybody or property, for instance, why disperse them? This is the question. Precisely. Precisely. And they don't do this in places uh, like Hong Kong, uh, in a place like Hong Kong. I mean, they do in Hong Kong, they use tear gas or or clean, uh, drinkable, potable water only when uh, rioters begin to dismantle public property like uh, subway stations or uh, or barriers that protect pedestrians uh, you know barriers between the sidewalks and the uh, roadways or when they start beating up the people who are for china or for beijing but here they just do it preventively and it's uh, it's really terrible i mean the the quantity of people injured goes to thousands it's so bad that uh, even doctors and nurses in hospitals they don't. Uh, they just snap. They uh, at the at so-called law enforcement uh, uh, personnel, or even to the minister of health, because they consider these people just responsible for all that horror that is going on. So this is uh, really uh, uh, traumatic for the people who lived through the dictatorship of Pinochet uh, that was imposed on them after 1973. But. You know, uh, it, now the situation is, uh, as you know, uh, developing uh, the uh, parties, political parties of uh, Chile, official political parties, actually accepted the main demand of the protesters, which is to uh, have new constitution, to get rid of the dictatorship days uh, or Pinochet time uh, constitution and to write the new uh, constitution uh, uh, within one year. The danger of this is, again, many protesters are saying, no, one year is too long time. And what can happen, actually, is that Piñera's party and other official big parties like Christian Democrats and socialists can just cozily sit together again and write their constitution use their nice language and then give it to people for a uh, referendum and uh, this would uh, destroy the revolutionary edge of the protests uh, so many people believe actually that uh, the constitution has to be created by the people, for the people, not by the political parties that already betrayed, that, uh, uh, you know, governed the country after, governed Chile after Pinochet stepped down and uh, did very little, actually, to bring the power back uh, to the Chilean citizens uh, uh, or to return Chile where it was before the natural process was interrupted in 1973 by the United States and the treasonous Chilean military and the elites. And so, and just just to remind people that how this all kicked off in Chile uh, last month was over, uh, I think it was public transport fares. Uh, metro, and- yes, the subway uh, metro fare w- went a tiny bit up, but it was... Uh, it was really uh, the last drop because you see the uh, you also so you understand the metro uh, 
system. It was planned by President Allende before 1973. It was supposed to be actually a symbol of Chilean socialism. Uh, and uh, basically what happened is now it's uh, uh, it's some kind of a combination dog cat of uh, uh, private and public uh, uh, system. And uh, in Chile, which is okay, it's a first world country, it's a rich country relatively, but still not so rich. Uh, the, the, the fare, the metro fare is, uh, was uh, more than one dollar before the peso went to what it is now um, against the dollar. So imagine you have one dollar or more uh, fare each way, right? And uh, there is no system like in New York or in Paris or in London uh, where or in Buenos Aires, where you just buy the monthly pass uh, or, uh, you know, you uh, have one hour and a half to transit. No, you have to take a bus. You have to pay for a bus. You have to take uh, for subway unless you you can transfer from subway lines, but you cannot uh, really transfer from subway to bus. So imagine somebody who is commuting from poor neighborhood may easily spend four dollars a day just for commuting. And that's unacceptable. It was not supposed to be like this. Uh, you know, uh, the Santiago metro system is beautiful. It's, it's full of art uh, galleries, basically, and uh, bookstores and everything. And each station is uh, designed as, a, as a, a great art gallery. But it degenerated lately into some kind of a uh, pro-profit or at least partially pro-profit uh, institution. And the people who are making, let's say, $600 uh, a month, they cannot afford to pay $4 a day to commute. It's absolutely unthinkable. So it was symbolic, okay? Uh, the increase was small, but uh, actually it's not a matter of increase. It should decrease uh, uh, tremendously. Uh, in uh, Argentina next door, it's uh, it's much more subsidized. And this is, uh, so this was kind of a symbol of uh, the state uh, stealing the socialist uh, uh, system and uh, privatizing it, the same as it privatized highways and uh, other things. And Piñera, the president of Chile, right-wing president of Chile, is a businessman. He's basically a transportation mag. Uh, he uh, owns the biggest uh, South American airline, LATAM, which ate almost all airlines all over South America. So it's all, all this is very symbolic. Mm-hmm. So we'll... We'll have to keep an eye on what's going on there, and you know, where do you, how do you see things developing in in the sort of near term? Uh, do you, how long do you think the demonstrations will will go on? Is, uh, is are there elections as well on the cusp uh, coming up? Is that is that on the cards as well? One of the main demands of the protesters is for Piñera and the entire government to resign, but even this would not be enough. He's holding to power. He is like. You know, between 9 and 12 percent popularity rating, uh, but uh, he's not ready to resign. People want him to resign. But even if he resigns and the entire cabinet resigns with him, this is not enough. People want total change of the system. They, this is real revolution. This is not Beirut. This is really not Beirut. It's a real socialist revolution. Communist Party of Chile is involved. Left-wing movements and new parties are uh, involved. The uh, nation is looking for leadership. There are very positive signs. There are young women uh, from the Communist Party now in Congress. They, uh, there is a, uh, uh, there are tremendous uh, wings of changes. It's not uh, some uh, plastic surgery as happen in places like Jordan or what may happen in Lebanon. This is real. This is real uh, also because Chile has a history of socialism. This is a highly polarized country. It's very political party. Even UN uh, agencies inside of them are uh, uh, the local staff is polarized and mainly left wing. It's not a joke. It's a serious uh, revolution, and uh, to appease people will not be easy. They understand what's what is going on. They discuss things. They don't trust the media. They create alternative sources of uh, uh, how to disperse the information. There is new uh, internet. Uh, there are new internet platforms uh, growing. And uh, Patrick, your question at the beginning: uh, Can it be kidnapped, infiltrated? It can, but it will be much more difficult to do than in places like Lebanon or elsewhere. This is the nation which gave the 
uh, which uh, has two Nobel Prize winners for poetry, where uh, of, it's a nation of dreamers, of great poets, of tremendous intellectuals, filmmakers, everything. This is uh, serious stuff. Yeah, this that, that is true that you pointed out. They they have their own. Uh, it's it's like a WhatsApp type system, messaging system, but it's it's by invitation only, and it's uh, it's not easy to get into, and you have to be recommended by a friend, and uh, it's completely independent. So, I mean, you don't yes, see that. I, have, I just came here and uh, I met uh, several people, and they know about my work. They are inviting me left and right. But as you said, it's you have to be invited. You have to be introduced. So, uh, uh, people from the left, like myself, they uh, the doors are open and it's very ex- inclusive, but uh, it has to be checked, and it's very correct that uh, uh, it has to be checked so it doesn't end up uh, in a in a, some horrible. Uh, way as uh, Arab Spring uh, or, uh, or uh, something else. So about uh, 21st century, the 21st wire, we will be, of course, uh, reporting live. Uh, I will be sending uh, uh, reports, uh, and uh, so we will be on top of this. This is very important for the entire Latin America, and it's very important for the entire world. That's right. So, yeah, Andre will, uh, we've, we released one uh, report uh, just yesterday, but he'll be releasing video reports uh, from Chile, and but also from other locations uh, around the world. The view from on the ground, what's happening politically on the street, I don't think you're going to get a better uh, vantage point, I think, uh, from somebody with a lot of experience in this area, and that's Andre Vilcek. But uh, we want to thank you, Andre, for joining us this week on the Sunday Wire once again, and uh, also keep an eye out for your coming video reports, which will be uh, coming out very soon. Patrick, thank you so much for having me with you. It's a great honor. And thank you very much for your work, Andre. We're going to take a short break, and we're going to connect with our next guest, and we're going to go through and break down the impeachment circus in Washington with George Samuel Lee. After the break, I'm your host, Patrick Henningsen. This is the Sunday Wire on the Alternate Current Radio Network. We'll be right back.